the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. <clears throat> well, we are here for our uh, monthly recollection this month of uh, June that we will be talking with our Lord here in the tabernacle of Mulabe study center and uh, yes I talk to you Lord every day in this center I live here and uh, well we want to share uh, to the uh, people uh, what we are going to talk about and uh, well we just have talked about of the past Easter uh, season so many weeks that uh, we have celebrated and it lasted for 50 days and last week was already the, the last Sunday of the month was Pentecost and uh, well we must have talk to the Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come why because we uh, want to be enlightened all the time uh, for uh, with the intellect and uh, to be uh, strengthened uh, of the heart and inflame the will to uh, carry on the mission. And that's uh, the prayer of Saint Samaria. We have learned you know, the, the, the intellect, the, the will, and the heart. And so much so, the continuing that, that prayer uh, is to tell uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, we would uh, do what we want, what you want, and uh, wherever you want, whenever. So, meaning at all times, we are at the disposition of the Holy Spirit, whom uh, you, Lord, had uh, sent to us last uh, Pentecost, the last uh, day of uh, that Easter. Now we are back to the uh, ordinary time and uh, well, we have uh, several feast day also to, uh, to celebrate you know, before uh, it uh, comes to the ordinary time. And uh, well, I, I simply want to recall you know, what uh, I have been uh, telling the Holy Spirit to come to me to to all of us. Why? Because it's really so good to tell the Holy Spirit to give us all the gifts. And we review the gifts of the Holy Spirit you know, with uh, the wisdom, the, the, the knowledge, the counsel, the understanding, the piety, the fortitude, and the fear of the Lord. So, well, Oh, we will not explain anymore. It's just uh, to recall and to review you know, what we have asked you know, for the gifts. And also I have memorized uh, the, for us, for you, you know, that how, the, how they are, you know, these uh, fruits that uh, we ask the Holy Spirit. Uh, with uh, the very, very first would be charity, love of God, love of neighbor. And uh, as a result, you, we are always at peace, you know, and that the joy of uh, children of God. And uh, continuing uh, that, those fruits, wow, good, kind, gentle, faithful, generous, patient. And the last three would be modesty and self-control and purity. So good, Lord, if we can beg and really ask the 
Holy Spirit through the Lord, no, or through the Holy Trinity that uh, we have, no, for uh, Sunday, then we will uh, be guaranteed of a good, good fight in here. No, we are in a battle. We are in constant uh, interior struggle, and so these gifts, these fruits, uh, even virtues that uh, we need, uh, will carry on. No, not that we celebrated, but we want to carry on. And well, Lord, we want to thank you for uh, yeah coming uh, to us. Uh, with the third person and that will accompany us all the time but uh, more than that uh, throughout the year uh, we will uh, keep on recalling your uh, love uh, for us your love for us shown in uh, how uh, the people of God have been prepared for centuries and that finally uh, that's the Son of God, uh, you, Lord Jesus Christ, came in our midst through our Mother Mary. That uh, incarnation, truly man, truly God, you, you came on earth and had been like us. Very the same, no difference except that you, ha you are God, you have that divine uh, person, but how you live your life, how you grew up in uh, Jerusalem and Nazareth, how you submitted to uh, Mary and Joseph, and how you, for many, many years, show us the, the way we would live our life through our ordinary life, through the, our uh, work that uh, we have, uh, what, what each one of us would do and our Lord simply would say, Well, uh, he has been uh, uh, known as the, uh, the, 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 uh, the son of a carpenter, right, Jesus? And uh, you did not deny that if uh, that was uh, what they uh, knew about you, because really they must have seen you working in the shop of uh, uh, Saint Joseph and uh, coming back home and going back to the shop for many years. And that's what our life will be. That's why, uh, you know, we are recalling uh, that, 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 that way that you have lived and because that is the, the path, that is the way. You know, though it's not really public, soon to be public when you arrive to your 30 years, then uh, for three years you were really uh, telling us uh, the people that uh, you have been uh, the son uh, sent by your father god and uh, teaching the disciples and the people proving that you are god uh, how we would say that our redemption your love of god through the many years of uh, working and uh, three years of public life to make sure that we are not at a loss where we are going, whom we want to follow, and whether what you and me and so many people have in mind or have uh, possessed as uh, their knowledge, what they know about God, well, here is already uh himself god uh telling us i am the way i am the truth follow follow me well, we have followed you lord thank you we are very very thank thankful and uh, more uh, especially when the love of god is not only this but the last the last part of your life which is your crucifixion yeah, when we have the Holy Week, when, uh, the Good Friday, and then the Resurrection. That's why at Mass, uh, that is the mystery that uh, has been uh, co constantly, repeatedly uh, commemorated. The Passion, Death, 
and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, showing His love for us. Your love for us, Lord, is mm, and not nothing to doubt. It's all very clear that, and it's not in words, but in deeds. Not enough. Maybe we will still uh, still uh, crave for more. Well, we need not us. Our Lord Himself had uh, thought of staying. Uh, accompanying us throughout our life to the end of time. And that's why you, Lord, had if uh, that uh, crucifixion uh, uh, is not enough uh, for us to really love you very much, you know, to return that love with love which we cannot. Yet you come again of another uh, manifestation of love. To show us to the end of time, and that's the the uh, feast days or solemnity that we would be uh, celebrating on the Corpus Christi Sunday, tenth Sunday of ordinary time. So there we have the feast day of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ being repeatedly you know, done by his ministers because you said, Lord, uh, the Last Supper uh, to the disciples whom you have ordained with the Holy Order to do this in memory of me so that I can come to you down and uh, be the food, be the body and the blood that will be the food for our uh, eternal life. That was very clear that our Lord poured out all his love. He would, you did not make any mistake, Lord, did you? By giving such, and you cannot take it back because just in case, or in many cases, uh, we have not respected that we have not done uh, as, 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 as carefully as we should with your body and blood that is here in the tabernacle or is received by uh, us in uh, the Holy Eucharist communion. If we are not ready, if we have not confessed, if uh, we, we don't prepare, and just uh, go and take. What would you uh, think of us, Lord? We are sinners and trying to take advantage to receive you, but a, a, a few times, maybe for others, it could be unworthy, not prepared, or not clean, not cleansed no, by the sacrament of penance, or so not even have said sorry for the offense they have done to you. But still, the love you have for the sinners, the love you have for all of us, that what you said, you came to save everyone, Lord. Everybody you know, on the cross, even the, 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 the good thief was uh, begging, uh, you to remember him when you get into your kingdom and how you can still utter you know, the, uh, uh, the last words, the, the last seven words you know, that you said on the cross. Today, you will be with me in paradise. You said that, we heard that, and uh, no, every... Uh, Good Friday, we recall the seven last words, and this is very moving. This shows how, to what extent you love each one of us, sinners. Sinners, up to the last minute, if ever. Well, we know we don't need to, to, uh, to wait for the last minute when we are already senior or old already or about to die, then we prepare. No, 
this monthly debt collection is precisely for that. Every month uh, and month by month, we have uh, a sort of uh, prayer, a sort of examination of conscience. And uh, well, in this in this topic that we are talking about, it's really just to to tell us, to show us, you know, Lord, Jesus Christ's extension of love for us. An uh, infinite love. Unlimited. We cannot ask for more. Lord, we cannot ask for more. You have given everything. Even if we, we did not ask, you provide yourself to be accompanying us, especially you, well, uh, you have uh, sent, uh, uh, we celebrate the Holy Trinity, no? the three persons in one God, God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Blessed Trinity in us, in the state of grace. And while we are alive, while we are moving, while we are trying to imitate our Lord, should be, then God is within us, accompanying us. Don't reject Him. Uh, don't uh, commit any sin, especially mortal sin that would be very grievous, serious, that our Lord will have to live. Because that's what we do. Get out. I welcome this offer coming from my enemy. It's a little of comfort. It's a little of pleasure or a lot of pleasure. It's uh, things that the world will, uh, will give us. And we tell Jesus or uh, the, the God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit move out because the devil is coming in. Well, that would be the saddest thing that uh, would happen to us when we get separated from you, Lord. Imagine that you came all the way to save us so that we can go back. We have celebrated uh, after 40 days your ascension, meaning you have gone back and you said you're going to prepare the place uh, for us. For everybody, everybody will have a place there in heaven. So that, so that when it's time for us to go then, and if we are prepared, and we are really huh, uh, following the Lord, then there, we uh, get into that kingdom and enjoy the, the company. That, that place will be ours. Uh, what is God's would be ours, and what ours is, is, is with God. And everlasting happiness. Not any more weekend, not any more I'll spend the, the vacation for one month and I come back, you know, all of this, uh, you know, get, going out and how, how long will you be there? Well, I'll spend six months with my uh, son in the U.S. and then come back again here for another six months for my other uh, son. Six months, six months. But with the Lord, it will be forever. So, <laughs> all the, the things that we have learned from Jesus, uh, His uh, commandments, His uh, sacraments, uh, he, the Catholic Church that will uh, administer those sacraments and will teach us through the prayers and through the homilies that we would attend every Sunday or even every day if we uh, get the, the essence no? or the, 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 uh, the, the main, uh, how do you call it, no? the, the, the salvation that uh, Lord you have shown to us repeated in, at Holy Mass, where you come down, where we eat you, where we reserve you here, where we spend time in the Adoration Chapel to talk to you. And that is what we have to do. Keep talk, talk to Jesus. 
when we are busy, we are doing a lot of things, it's time to, to, to have a short uh, talk, short chat with the Lord, morning and afternoon and uh, midday, whatever, because, well, during the day, surely we are busy with work. But our Lord is waiting for us in the Adoration Chapel to carry on. No. Day by day, uh, month by month, and before we know it, it's already many, many years. And uh, we are just left with a few more to really, uh, mm, you know, eagerly uh, aspire, you know, eagerly desire, you know. And, uh, well, we have uh, even uh, the, the feast day of the Sacred Heart where we also we, uh, celebrate the solemnity of the Sacred Heart, which is the heart of Jesus there. Uh, and very red uh, with uh, glowing uh, lights. What is that? That heart that we have also keep on pumping and give us a big heart. Lord, why? So that we can love you more as you have loved us. That is the only purpose. That heart that we see, we look at it, and that is the heart that has really loved the whole world. It's the heart of Jesus. Well, we uh, end our uh, prayer uh, going to Jesus and especially to that sacred heart that uh, we can uh, we can uh, always uh, call no we give uh, that heart so that when it's still pumping and uh, uh, loving you and uh, still alive so to speak well we will have that zeal no to keep on working to keep on uh, doing things here on earth in this so short a time given to us no, we are not running off time. We just have to abandon and say, Lord, whenever. But I am preparing all the time. No, you give me long life, and therefore I will reach to 70, to 80. You give me a short life like the others. Something happened then also. But what is important to all of us is that we are always preparing and always with that heart pumping and say, how can I love God more and more and more? Well, we also go to the Immaculate Heart of uh, Mary, which we have also the feast day. And uh, our mother who has loved Jesus very much throughout uh, his life, being a mother. Now we have our uh, Mother Mary, whom uh, she has been given by our Lord Jesus Christ, let's embrace, embrace a mother. Go to her. Those devotion that we have learned uh, the last month, where it's uh, uh, May, May month of uh, May, month of Our Lady uh, pilgrimages, or uh, uh, trying to, to to see how we can go very very close to Mama Mary. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Examination of Conscience 
act of presence of God. Jesus, I put myself trustingly in your arms, hiding my head on your loving breast, my heart touching yours. I want what you want in everything, taken from the Fords 529. Do I want to have a big and generous heart that understands and knows how to serve as Christ did? So often in life, we waste time asking ourselves, Who am I? You can keep asking, Who am I? for the rest of your lives. But the real question is, For whom am I? Of course, you are for God. But He has decided that you should also be for others. And he has given you many qualities, inclinations, gifts, and charism that are not for you, but to share with those around you. Saint Jose Maria used to say, I haven't needed to learn how to forgive because the Lord has taught me how to love. Are there people I could understand and love more? Do I ask God to give me the grace to love those who have not treated me well? Who have humiliated me, or whom I find difficult to get on with? Do I know how to overlook the defects of others? How do St. Jose Maria's teachings nourish my prayer and my relationship with the Lord? Do I ask for His intercession to help me in my family and with my friends?
when seeking to discern our own vocation, there are certain questions we ought to ask. We should not start with wondering where we could make more money or achieve greater recognition and social status. Nor even by asking what kind of work would be most pleasing to us. If we are not go to go astray, we need a different starting point. We need to ask, do I know myself? quite apart from my illusions and emotions? Do I know what brings joy or sorrow to my heart? What are my strengths and weaknesses? These questions immediately give rise to others. How can I serve people better? I'm proof most helpful to our world and to the church. What is my real place in this world? What can I offer to society? Even more realistic questions then follow. Do I have the abilities needed to offer this kind of service? Could I develop those abilities? Act of contrition. Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, pray for us. Let us start with the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. My heart is restless until it rests in you says St. Augustine of Hippo. So today we'll have a talk about spiritual direction, both uh, receiving it and giving it to other people. So we all know that despite our weaknesses, uh, failings, forgetting God or distractions in lives, uh, we find ourselves with uh, a deep nostalgia 
a certain longing for God uh, and not an unknown God. In fact, a God-made man. So with a face, a uh, personality, with an affection that calls me by my name, with love and friendship. You know? So that's Jesus Christ, right? So we yearn for him. We yearn for him because as, uh, as, it, is, as it, it is said in the letter to the Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in fact, he is alive. And that's why there's that hunger because he's calling us out. Well, this same Jesus, who is perfect God and perfect man, who is uh, the way, the truth, and the life, who is the light of the world and the bread of life, can be our friend. <clears throat> he can be our friend if I so wish. So let's listen to St. Augustine. No? He speaks from experience of a, a sharp mind and great heart. He said, I can be God's friend if I so wish. So I can be God's friend if I so wish. So we have to want it. But in order to achieve this friendship, you and I must approach Jesus and get to know him and love him. So my effort. No? <laughs> so relationship. You know? So some of us who are married, uh, for those who still remember, courtship, the right? my effort. Yan, right? So you have to get to know that person. You have to spend time, allocate time, even money. So we have to view it as that, not as an obligation, but you know, us seeking out a lover because he has seeked us out first. Now, despite this nostalgia for God, for Jesus Christ, um, it's true that there are still people who view Jesus as uh, some sort of faded figure of history. Um, in fact, some people are even bold enough uh, out of maybe ignorance or, or lack of study or even lack of interest about it. And they just conclude, conclude so easily and say that the Catholic Church has failed. No? Uh, and talking about Catholic Church failing, the Catholic Church failing, uh, there's this anecdote that I really like no? about this uh, maybe a non-Catholic who wants to be a Catholic. Uh, and then and, and in, in that line, in that story, uh, someone presented him, presented to him all the scandals of the church that could possibly turn him off. No? So, and to make the long story short, the conclusion by that guy is he continued to be uh, converted. He wanted to be baptized as a Catholic. And what he said was that if this institution is an institution of man then with all the scandals and sins of the members it would have failed but since it's still alive then i only believe it because it is most likely an institution that uh, that of god you know and not of man so so badly put there and i put it badly there so but you know so it's it's if it were of a man yeah, it would have failed. Like, no matter what, I'm a businessman myself. Uh, strat plan, you know, preparing, hiring the right people, you know, putting proper HR measures, right? But in the church, there's so much mess, no? But, and yet it lasted so long. Uh, so that's, that's the idea, no? That the church has not failed. So going back, these people, uh, these people are the ones who, who want, who view, and you know, sometimes we view it as this, you know, who view the religion of Jesus Christ as just a set of rules uh, or a series of penal edicts and heavy responsibilities. Uh, these souls are suffering from obviously a remarkable short-sightedness. Um, like you do the sacrifice or mortification or praying the rosary, which is so monotonous. Why will I do that? I have something else better to do. So they see religion only something tiring, uh, burdensome, depressing at times because it, 
it, it eats up my time for Netflix <laughs> or my time for rest. Uh, their hearts are cramped and lopsided minds, which look at Christianity as if it were a calculating machine. Good, this is what you do. Uh, ito bad, good, good, bad, bad, uh, debit, credit. Yeah. Um, it's sad. No? There's our mean, disillusioned hearts, uh, which know nothing of the riches of Christ. These are false Christians, actually, to remove Christ's smile from the face of Christian life. And to all these people, we then say, according to the Psalms, come and see, <laughs> or taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Right? Now, as we are all in this uh, online recollection, uh, we, in the days of the physical recollection, we sorely miss that uh, long line even prior to, even starting before the actual recollection no? for confession. In that confession line, we see coming to us, not even waiting. No? The, the priest, of course, is waiting for us to, to, for our turn, right? But in reality, the one, waits, the one who waits with us, who brings us to confession is that good shepherd who is Jesus Christ. We have to remember that he called us first. When we are lost, he seeked us out and left the 99 to find us. He carries us in his own back. So Jesus Christ is a shepherd. Are we also being shepherds like him? Right? So remember Jesus as the good shepherd. Um, now, of course, we know that Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, now, contrary to Masonic beliefs, uh, maybe dun galing yun, I don't know. Uh, they believe that God created a, a universe, a working universe, and then left us for good and must rely on our own goodwill. <laughs> no, but it's not true because it came from Jesus' mouth. Our good shepherd said, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So our good shepherd remembers us and he has given us the gift, which is we've just celebrated and a few days ago, the, the feast of the Pentecost, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit, which is the most important thing. You know? um, they say the Holy Spirit you know the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit. When you see, so to differentiate yesterday, uh, well, um, this last yesterday, Sunday, which from the time of this recording, the, the Feast of the Blessed Trinity, to distinguish between the three persons, when you see creation, you remember God the Father, who is our creator. When you see a beautiful building, a beautiful house, a beautiful car, or, you know, something that's man-made, or relations, no? like a friendship, you know, barcada, you see Jesus Christ, perfect God and perfect man. Now, how do you see the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is seen through the conversion of a person. So whether it's you or someone you love, maybe, you know, you've been praying for this person, a relative of yours who's not received confession for how many years that's where you see the holy spirit when finally that person um wants to go to confession in fact um us being able to say jesus is my lord is through the holy spirit because we will not be able to say that and believe that if without the holy spirit now the Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, also left us with the vicar of Christ, St. Peter and the successors. So the Pope and the priests, no? And we must be unwavering for our love with the Pope, no matter what the media feeds us with. No? We have to pray for priests, for their perseverance, for graces, no? Now, he has left us with the Pope, with the priests, and sometimes, generally, just because the hierarchy <laughs> uh, 
uh, is presented that way, most Catholics think that it stops there, the, the priest. No? However, as brothers in the faith, we have an obligation to guide other people and be guided as well. We have an obligation to pray for one another, making sacrifices for one another, setting a good example, and when necessary, correcting one another. So we have to uh, seek spiritual direction with most urgency and care. You know, personally, it's important that we have that uh, spiritual direction, that we seek guidance for our souls, uh, our sculptures or artworks that need their artists. So God sends our way directors to help us mold our souls and our being, not just to be like Christ, but to be another Christ. So that's, that's going to happen without our directors. We are just that mold, no? whether a clay is pretty much like mud, right? Or chopped wood. No? I look at in front of my house, no? they had to cut this uh, coconut tree that died. No? So and there's a lot of lumber outside. No? So, but you see that from that you know, uh, cut wood, can, can come a, an artwork if in the the right hands, no, in the right hands no? of, of, of a very talented artist, right? So, so that's our soul. If without it, well, just pang, pang kalso lang, di ba? Uh, pang harang or upuan, di ba? Or worst, uh, used for uh, firewood. So we need our spiritual guidance now while we are seeking uh, guidance and because we want to pursue uh, and improve our spiritual life no? uh, we know of what pope francis so emphasized when he visited the philippines now i think this was most most likely in in usd when he was talking there so he said we catholics especially the devout ones we should not be like museums to be looked at or admired. No? So, of course, there's nothing. Museums are important. I mean, like I'm not belittling the cultural contributions of museums. No? But what he meant there was that, you know, museums, it's not an essential good now. Maybe that's one way to look at it, right? It's probably closed. But it's something that's perfect, beautiful, unmuddied, or never dirtied. Something to nice to look at. So us, you know, collecting as much virtues as we like, going to mass every day, holding that breviary or Bible, not doing anything except that we're going to mass. <laughs> Instead, Pope Francis wants us to be emergency rooms. Our Christian brothers are overwhelmed with distractions, overwhelmed with information. There's usual, the usual struggles that we all go through in life. What they need right now is criteria. They need the, stand, uh, the set of standards for, for how to live this life uprightly. I, I, I think I heard about how education will will have to evolve in a better way because, well, I'm a millennial and I think I reached that transition from, from the uh, encyclopedias to encyclopedias and CDs to, to Wikipedia and, and really Google being having information readily available. And no offense to our older generation, they say that, that this generation has so much more knowledge you know, does it mean more wise though right does it mean more it doesn't mean more moral so so in a in a personal way our christian brothers need us now because maybe information content media is what consumes their brains and again i started this talk with saying our hearts are restless until it rests in you People try to seek solace from unlimited consumption. 
whether it's shopping or watching YouTube or Netflix or games. I mean, there's there's nothing sinful about these things if they are consumed in the right way, uh, in the spirit of poverty, or as my wife would likely, uh, who likes to put it in a way, ang uso ngayon, minimalism. <laughs> It's somewhat similar to, to the living the spirit of poverty. But nonetheless, that's what consumes them. And so there is much need for guidance for other people. And, and some people need to hear what you are hearing to share your experiences. So how, uh, how can we do this? Uh, what are the conditions for us to be good shepherds ourselves? Number one, the first condition that we must fulfill is to have that love. Okay, love. Parang masyadong cheesy, no? But no, love. Love. The charity was the very first virtue our Lord demanded of St. Peter before entrusting to him the care of his flock. Remember that scene after he resurrected. Peter, do you love me? Asked him three times. So at the same time, he asks us that, ask that huh? do you love me? If you love me, you love my people and my church. Take care of my flock. So how do I love? Connect to the main source of charity. Something that we ask for. The most important things we ask for is faith, hope, and charity. Lord, increase my love. Ask him, ask the Lord for love. Second thing that we need to fulfill is the need to be watchful so that he may be attentive to the needs of his flock. And so meaning you're sensitive to the needs of others. Maybe something that you can remember here is Our Lady, who is very sensitive uh, in general, like uh, the scene of, of the you know, wedding at Cana, right? She's very watchful. She noticed, oh, what is the, this this maybe cousin of Jesus need the, the, the bride or the groom. No, we don't know exactly. But it's obviously a close family or a friend. She saw na wala ng wine. So as simple as that. So we have to be watchful. If you are able to see and, and become very watchful in those small things, then what more so? The needs of the souls of these people. Work of mercy. Third, third thing that we must fulfill is doctrine, the aim of which is to provide men with food that will enable them to reach salvation. So, teaching them how to fish instead of giving them fish. Meaning, share with them the wealth of the Catholic Church. Right? So, we have to take it ourselves. Huh? Very, very practical. You know, the centers of Opus Dei have weekly doctrine classes. You know, and every year the cycle repeats. No, so we should be able to learn these things, and those are, and it's called basic Christian doctrine, right? So, so it's basic, but not everybody learns it, right? So, we should, you should consume it ourselves, and then we should have our our friends take it. And finally, a good shepherd uh, requires holiness and integrity of life, which is the foundation of all these qualities. Now. Holiness and integrity in life does not mean never falling or a certain sense of perfectionism. Rather, uh, it's a constant seeking of the love and mercy of God. It's the constancy of your humility and abandonment to God. St. Therese of Lisieux was converted because of this passage in the gospel. Uh, so, and, and, it, and it showed her how to be holy. How do you become holy? To be holy is to be little, like children. So we should have in the isip bata, a childlike spirit. A child is, is confident towards his father and mother. A child says things as they are. A sin is a sin. I'm hungry. I will eat. I'm dirty. I will, be, I will go there to be clean to my parents. Simple right without complications so it would be good for us to always remember in our prayers those souls who have been given charge of our own souls so let's pray for people who are chatting with us who are spending time with us because because they need it no 
and and so and so we also pray that it we never lack these souls who take care of of, of people no? and lastly we have to remember in everything that we're doing is really to try to align our will to the will of god no so it's it's wanting your your objective for yourself and for the people that you give guidance to is that you want your will to be his will our challenge is for us to want the will of god in everything to accept it with joy to love it no matter how difficult or incomprehensible it appears so again we're reminded that this is not the capitulation of the weak before the strong Instead, it is a manifestation of the trust between a son and his father. The father's goodness teaches us to become fully human, to discover the grandeur of our divine sonship. So, so that's the beauty, you know. It's not, <laughs> it's not something that's just imposed on us because I'm more powerful. No, we God wants us to live as princes, as sons. And the Holy Spirit gently leads us in the right direction. So uh, we cannot so much as pray God willing without his guidance and support, says St. Augustine. And let us close with a prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We continue our June recollection uh, with a very important uh, feast that uh, is coming month of June is always referred to our very own the saint, no, founder of Wolf's Day, Saint Jose Maria. And uh, so in this uh, uh, prayer that we talk with our Lord, we'll uh, uh, talk about what we know, what we have been uh, reading, what we know uh, about uh, the saint. Or maybe we know very little. We have heard uh, his name. For some, never. Saint Jose Maria, do you know? Who is that father? Uh, well, a saint, a modern saint. No, never heard. In, even in my parish, we don't have the, the, the image of Saint Jose Maria. So, many... I still uh, do not know. Well, for us, must be blessed. Uh, we are members, we are cooperators, we uh, somehow attend means of formation, and every now and then, we must have heard, and we have read, there must be news uh, coming uh, from uh, opusday.ph.org about the Opus Day. So, uh, well, it's, it's something, you know, that we keep on adding 
to what we know about Saint Rosa Maria. And is it uh, an added saint for us to say, well, there are uh, so many hundreds of uh, saints that uh, in the list or in a book of saints, so many, and with their bi biography, you know, uh, the, the life that uh, they have spent, so many. And Saint Rosa Maria just came in and uh, not really for long that we have we are celebrating no his uh, 21st anniversary if i'm not wrong 2002 he was canonized already and therefore uh, until uh, this uh, year we have celebrated 21 times of the uh, anniversary of his canonization and yes our uh, Austria Maria has been declared saint in that plaza of St. Peter with uh, hundreds of uh, pilgrims from all over the world. We have the videos and, you know, uh, year by year, uh, we want to recall. Not only on this June 26th where we would surely uh, to... Uh, commemorate will be asking our uh, parish priests uh, in our place or wherever in the province to have a mass for uh, Saint Rosa Maria. Why not? No? So that uh, the uh, people uh, going to the parish, they will uh, get to know him to the mass and plus uh, the uh, parish priests in a few minutes, uh, telling or explaining uh, who Saint Rosa Maria is. But as we have said, for us, many uh, have known him very well, how he had started all of this sort of uh, work of God, uh, God's plan for uh, men, uh, for our salvation. So many saints, so many saints. And then come uh, well, uh, last century, 1902, he came in, in, into life. Uh, he was born and, uh, uh, well, he, like uh, any baby, as we know, he grew up uh, with a Catholic family, with his parents. And uh, only then, when he was uh, young, as we know, he... Uh, well, he uh, felt that God wanted something, but he didn't, he didn't know. And thus we would say, oh, he, uh, we repeat what he uh, had been uh, repeating for years before his Opus Dei. Lord, Domine, ut bidiam, Lord, that I may see. And very good aspiration, very good prayer, because, well, not only Saint Rosa Maria, will uh, say that. Even you and me will at times set a loss, Lord, that I may see uh, what you have planned for me, what I need to do, or uh, what is my future, Lord, that I, that I may see. So very, very nice uh, prayer. And that was what St. Jose Maria was asking all the time. Uh, to the to the point that well, that was his youth uh, for almost ten years while he was studying and in okay uh, in order to see your plan he decided to go enter the seminary and study philosophy theology and having uh, fulfilled uh, that 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 uh, uh, the requirements no uh, nineteen. Uh, 2025, 20, no, uh, he was uh, ordained priest. Yes, he was ordained priest at that time. Huh? I'm, I'm lost with the dates now, but there, no, he became priest and he was asking, I haven't seen yet what God wanted of me when I, I felt uh, many years back. 
And he continued working as a priest and helping out in confession and catechism. And three more years, in 1928, October 2, he saw Opus Dei. And that was it. He saw, I saw. Oh, it was there in a, in a nutshell, no? He saw, he knew what that is. And of course, uh, at the time, uh, to talk about uh, that what he saw, and people could not believe even what you, Lord, wanted uh, St. Osa Maria to do. And he was all alone, and no means, and, uh, and uh, no people. But then he wanted to carry on. What a faith of our founder. No, so much faith in that God uh, God gave him this uh, mission or this vocation to be the founder of his day and he kept it and he worked on it, he prayed hard and eventually in the 30s uh, people, young people uh, coming, coming and getting to know a handful of these young people newly graduated from college and including uh, our successor, uh, Blessed Alvaro, in 1935, they met, and that was it. <laughs> Blessed Alvaro saw his vocation to help out you know, this uh, founder, uh, Saint Jose Maria. But we know again from the story, it's not so easy. The civil war came, and they have to stop, and they have, uh, Jose Maria had to, to, to flee to run away and uh, they could have gotten him and killed him but you have your plans lord god has his plan and so he was able to go over to the other side and uh, continue the work that he started before the civil war and therefore in the 40s slowly uh, back in uh, spain of course spain madrid he was there uh, uh, talking to people and uh, putting up uh, some uh, houses, or centers where uh, people dedicated will live. But again, people attacking. And if we don't understand what that is, and maybe we don't believe, what are you talking about? If up to now, maybe do we still have uh, second thoughts of saying, is that possible what St. Rosa Maria is proposing to everybody? Actually, it's not him anymore. No, at the time, yes, because it came from God and he was telling people and, and uh, people just uh, ignore and even attack him. How would that be possible? What is, not, what, what is that impossible thing? that he was telling the people around him and even to the church that God asked me to tell everybody, no, we are all called to be holy, uh, to be saints, and uh, to have that ap uh, apostolic uh, vibration, uh, me meaning mission to carry out uh, the task of the apostles everybody and therefore uh, through uh, the everyday work you would do not as centuries before you know i have to get out i have to go to the mountains i have to go and, and join a community you know, religious community uh, monastery to be able to concentrate to be able to pray uh, without much distraction. That was then in order to serve the Lord. That was what people had in mind. But then here comes uh, Saint Maria telling, no, 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 that's good. Very good. God has planned for these people. But for the majority, for all of us, the plan since you are in your respective work, where you are in the offices, in the factories, uh, in the 
uh, in uh, all sorts of uh, position. You, know, you could be on top, you know, the managers, or you can be there, uh, simple employees, or like a uh, carpenter, uh, St. Joseph, or many mothers that will be spending their, their, all their time uh, at home. Uh, and to take care of the family the children, you know, what they will eat and the clothes that uh, she has to wash. Of course, they are kasambahay already helping, helping her, you know, but she would still be there uh, trying to make sure that uh, everything is in order. Uh, when they when they come home, when uh, you know the husband comes home, everything is ready for the meals and for the house. Could that be making the mother, making you, any of you at work, where you work, be very close to God, be very holy? Maybe you might say, that's what you said, but I don't think so. It must be very difficult, Father. And Lord, Jose Maria is uh, so idealistic and say we will uh, be uh, uh, getting our holiness in, in the bustle and hustle of the world and very noisy and full of uh, people uh, working in the factory, so much noise and I am just in, in, in their midst also helping out and working. And there, right there, I have to find God. Well, this one uh, has been already approved by the church. And unlike before the Second Vatican Council, uh, you cannot um, really fight back or be able to have a document saying, well, but this has already been studied and has been approved by the church. It has been, there is already Lumen Gentium, Presbyterum Ordi Ordinis, that will prove that there, no, the uh, bishops have studied, have prayed, and the Pope had, uh, had already approved that it is really a vocation, a Christian vocation, a vocation for everybody, uh, ordinary people working in ordinary work wherever, at all times. Difficult to achieve 24 7. Father, pwede ba yun? Kaya ba yun? 24 7. You know, when uh, I tell people 24-7, so, well, walang pahinga. Wow, kakapagod naman yan. Initially, maybe we'll say, oh, is that what really and, and can, that can be uh, achieved? Well, Saint Jose Maria, our saint, will say, yes. That's what God had given to me. That uh, it's not just simply eight hours and then the rest uh, would be nothing, yeah, you are on your own, and then another eight hours at this day, at certain time, that's where you, you will uh, be able to practice your Christian vocation. He said, no, it's the whole day, it's every day, wherever you are. So that is already something uh, that uh, we have uh, gotten, and we are uh, making our examination of conscience in this month of June uh, in preparation for the uh, uh, solemnity of the feast day of Saint Jose Maria and uh, well be able to rejoice and say yes uh, I know and uh, well I'm trying you no know, and uh, it's possible because well I uh, go to a center I uh, am uh, attending some means of formation like circle uh, recollection like in here our recollection for the page uh, we we listened a little and uh, you know, had done our examination of conscience a while ago. And uh, all these materials that we are uh, talking about with the Lord and, and self-examinations, yes, they are really good. 
and attainable? Yes. There are saints already, Saint Jose Maria himself as a founder, and the Blessed Alvaro, uh, the Blessed Guadalupe, and the many others in, in, in the process of beatification. And we need not be saying, I am aiming for the process. No, no need. Just live that spirituality, uh, that sanctification where you are, and God will. God is watching the Lord, and He sees that we have learned from Saint Jose Maria what He has taught during His lifetime. Forty-seven years, really pushing and telling uh, the others, so that when He uh, has been taken back uh, by the Lord, there will be many, many others to continue, like Blessed Alvaro, Bishop. Javier uh, Echeverria, now our present prelate, Monsignor Fernando, uh, Lan, yeah, uh, Fernando, no. and all of us. <laughs> we would not be depending only on the successor, but he would say, well, all, all my children, those who have seen their vocation in Opus Dei, eh, those who are uh, participating you know, in the activities in schools or whatever, even in hospitals, you know, and putting to practice what uh, they have learned from uh, Saint Jose Maria and ongoing formation. That I really have to recommend because otherwise it's very ideal, very nice. You, know, you want to have, be very close to God you need not get out of uh, where you are, where I am. It's just precisely where I am and what I am doing. As a priest, as a mother, as a father, uh, any workers, uh, engineers, doctors, nurses, technicians, farmers, all kinds of profession. They are honest and clean. And they can sanctify, they can make those work uh, hours, hours of work, very holy, presentable, being offered to God all the time. There is, as we have said, there is no time, every time, and we can prolong it so much so that after work that we are very, uh, you are very tired, what do you do? You go home. And there you find your family, your children, uh, the wife or the husband, there uh, trying to relax, trying to uh, spend time with the children, uh, taking uh, the dinner together, family get together. That is already sanctif sanctification of the family and uh, the people who are there, the wife and the children, if it's the husband trying to do that no, because well he has learned uh, to really be cheerful and to be uh, generous uh, with in serving the others uh, not of himself uh, i want to relax i stay in my room and i don't care with my children uh, coming home with their studies or playing and uh, don't participate in family life oh that might uh, be not sanctifying the family and including you might uh, we might not believe it including that it's my time to rest to sleep at nine or at ten i have to stop because that is how i will sanctify my body to rest for enough rest so that the following day, I follow my schedule and start again my uh, work. So it's really a continuous cycle from up and down, from day to night, and there we offer everything to God. And that is how we spend this uh, spirituality of St. Jose Maria, sanctifying everything. Do you like that? Or you might think it's too, too much or too difficult. 
Well, but that's what we need to do. That's what is important in life. Not what you what we will offer with the things that we buy or uh, you know the money that we have deposited in the bank or any material things that we might have bought. Those are temporal things that later on we would not need at all. We leave them behind. What then is precious? Something uh, that we would not regret. It's the teaching of Saint Maria. It's the holiness that we have uh, attained in spending many years, uh, as many years as we have gotten to know him. We have already started, but we have to keep on going, keep on improving, because we might go back to our, you know, past bad habit and character that we have not changed and we could not uh, be so uh, patient with the others and the conflict that we have with the family or with colleagues. That would not be sanctifying yourself nor <laughs> sanctifying the others, meaning huh? by our good example, by our dealings, they are also being brought uh, close to God. Think about that. Meditate on it this uh, whole month of June, before the feast, before uh, we all attend to the Fiesta Mass on 26th. Uh, we are just early June uh, for this uh, uh, re monthly recollection. And we can uh, keep on coming back and, and trying to see. No? I am myself, I'm uh, trying to do my best. And uh, since I am a member, since I have committed myself, how I am passing uh, this, uh, introducing Santa Samaria to as many people. Because as we have said earlier, many people when asked, do you know who? Who is that? They don't know. And who will introduce our Father or Saint Jose Maria to them, if not you and me, the few, uh, to the to the many, just like the apostles, the twelve, like, go and bring the good news. Now, for us, is go and bring Saint Jose Maria's spirituality to all the corners of the earth. What a great task to do, but we are as zealous because well, they have to know. If not sayang, it's really spending time uselessly, which they don't know. Because maybe it's our fault. Kasi, why? Because you did not talk, you did not share, you did not give a prayer card, you did not maybe bring the picture of St. Maria to your place, to the parties, to the hospitals, to the schools that you are in touch. And therefore, the people there would not know at all. So it's even a responsibility or we can say uh, an obligation you know, that can we just uh, be uh, cool and uh, just be very passive that it's not my, my work. No, every baptized Catholic are uh, commanded to uh, have both these, these, these ends uh, we talk about. You are called to be holy and to be apostolic. Have to. That mission is given to everybody, you and me. So we examine, we check how we are after many years for us, because yes, truly enough, uh, 50 years almost for me, have known Opus Dei. And for the others, you count. They say, yeah, also 30, 40 years already. If we are a senior, we are growing old, and then uh, we might examine, you know, how many have I brought closer to God? Have I that fortitude, daring, courage to share with them what I am doing, what I believe very good sanctification? So that we are inspired to, to look around and see and be, be doing apostolate. 
Yeah, especially we are just very, very few. We cannot rely on the others. So we ask the Holy Spirit, <laughs> as we have asked a while ago, you know, all those fruits, all those virtues, uh, all those uh, yeah, the things that we need uh, to carry out the sanctification, yeah, the qualities, the virtues. Yes, Lord, Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, give me the gifts. Well, we end our prayer thanking the Lord for uh, means of formation that uh, at least we have on our own uh, being given month by month. And of course, furthermore, uh, the retreat that uh, we have for the year. We go to Mama Mary and also as and beg Mama Mary to help us you know, in this uh, spirituality we are learning or we know already but we want to do better no and uh, whom could we ask for those graces a lot of graces if not from our mama mary i thank you my god for the good resolutions affections inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Thank you.